and welcome to this week's What's Hot. And I hope you had a lovely long Jubilee weekend and you weren't stuck abroad at the airport or in the queues at the petrol station because as of today, Tuesday the 7th of June, the price of petrol and diesel have set new highs. Not once, but three times over the past six days. Now that's an awful lot of numbers to process, but basically we are approaching two pounds a litre, although some service stations on the M1 has already gifted us with that nice-ish round number. So the oil stocks are benefiting. If they weren't, there would be something structurally unsound with those companies. Let's have a look at the three-month share price chart of BP and the three-month share price chart of Shell. So in terms of currencies, we saw the pound weaken after a third of the Conservative Party, the MPs and those on the payroll voted against the boss, Boris. Two thirds confidence in the boss doesn't make for a country that is searching and yearning for stability and normality. Now, back to non political news. Or is it? Because shares in cinema owner Cineworld, well, they have been rising in tandem with the release of Maverick. That's the sequel to Top Gun. Now, Maverick earned £438 million in the first 10 days of its release and is doing well. However, Paramount Pictures is being sued for copyright infringement over Maverick, the family of the Israeli writer whose magazine article inspired the original Tom Cruise movie, claims the film studio's rights to Ed Hood Yone's 1983 story Top Guns expired in 2020. Interesting timing for that complaint to be lodged. The world is indeed becoming a very litigious place and JD Sports fashion facing another fine from the UK's competition watchdog. This is for alleged collusion with elite sports over the price of Rangers FC merchandise. The competition and markets authority said JD and elite fix prices on Rangers replica kits and short sleeve short sleeved shirts and colluded with the club to keep the price of replica shirts at 60 pounds. Well, not entirely unexpected, but sad nonetheless, we saw shares in former FTSE 100 darling Petro Pavlask falling after the Russian gold miners said it will be unable to pay a key term loan, adding it very unlikely that shareholders will now see a return due to its indebtedness. It's a shame because it's a very well-run company. The fundamentals are sound. It just isn't domiciled in a very popular country at the moment. And it is a victim of events that are not within its control, all to do with UK SAC sanctioned Gazprom bank uh, telling Petropavlovsk it wanted the immediate repayment of 201 million US dollars due under the company's committed term facility agreement with the bank and repayment of a further 87.1 million US dollars due under the London listed company's Russian subsidiaries revolving credit facilities. Sorry to end on such a downer, but I hope you are well and you're safe. See you same time next week. <laughs>